Uh, so with that, uh, please, um, Melissa, we'd like to hear your story. And please, when you're ready, proceed. Melissa, why don't you tell us your name and, and uh, tell us as short and as briefly as you can what, what happened sure. when you were working for Dominion. Sure. My name is Melissa Carone. Um, I was contracted to work um, for Dominion Voting Systems. I was, uh, I'm a freelance IT worker. Uh, I was contracted to work for Dominion to assist with IT during the election. I started work at 6 a.m. on November 3rd at the TCF Center. I got off work at 5 a.m. November 4th, went home, went to bed, returned to work at 10 a.m. November 4th, stayed until approximately 2 p.m. November 4th. Um, when I got off, I had a doctor's appointment. I was supposed to come back to work. My One of the Dominion employees, uh, he's in my affidavit, his name is Samuel, texted me and said, we're almost done counting ballots. We don't need you to come back. It was getting a little rowdy when I left. I really didn't want to come back anyways. Um, uh, so that is why that I, I was contracted to work uh, for Dominion, uh, assisting with IT. And when you were working there, what, uh, what did you observe? Uh, I observed um, numerous employees, um, city workers, um, running batches of ballots through the tabulators countless times without discarding them first. The tabulating machines would jam two to three times an hour. When they would jam, the correct process would be to pull out the problem ballot that jammed, say the problem ballot was number 24 out of 50. We would, I, would, I wasn't allowed to touch any hardware at all. I would assist them, tell them to pull out this ballot, um, put the problem ballot on top. In Michigan, our ballots um, from the tabulators don't just drop into ballot, steel ballot boxes. Um, they are now, as they got tabulated, they are now on top of the tabulating machine. Okay, so instead of them taking these, so say, let's keep it number 25 is the problem ballot, it got jammed. So the computer would throw an error. It would say ballot number 25, uh, there, there's an error. I would say pull out ballot number 25, slowly pull it out, put it on top, take the, um, the ballots that had already been tabulated, which are on top of the tabulating machine now, put them all back in a stack, discard the entire batch, and rescan it. Instead of discarding, they were just rescanning, 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 counting ballots nine to ten times, counting votes nine to ten times. So they were counting the same ballot, the same vote, nine or ten times. Yes, sir. They were counting them nine. How, or how ten many times. times did you observe that? Um, these machines would jam two to three times an hour each machine. Uh, there were approximately twenty two to 24 tabulating machines in the TCF center. Um, I, I, I observed it thousands, thousands, thousands Th of times. Thousands of times? Thousands and how, how many machines, were there 20 machines approximately? Approximately between 20, 20, 22 to 24. Machines. And did, were there any uh, Republicans who were observing or just Democrats? I saw very few Republicans, um, about three. And how about those 20 machines? Who, did you see any of them observing those 20 machines where the ballot was being put in 10 uh, or 20 times? Big question. I got, a couple, I got some of them questioning me. Um, I, my manager had came up to me. I had called my manager over to a specific uh, tabulating machine. I showed him a number on it, which was close to 500. It should never go over 50. Batches come in, ballots come in batches of 50. I said, we have a severe problem here. 
Nick, a, a town in Maganus, which is a part owner of Dominion. And um, he said, Melissa, I don't want to hear that we have a problem. He said, we are here to assist with IT. We are not here to run their election. That is exactly what he said to me. Um, at that point, I was just really frustrated and upset. I, I could tell what was going on. I, I knew what was going on at that point. What was going on? Um, he was in on it. He was in on it. They were all in on it. In on what? They were cheating. It, it, it was very, very apparent. It was apparent he knew. It was apparent that he was in on it. And when he caught on to me being in, knowing, me knowing that he was in on it, he just wanted nothing to do with me. Now, oh, did there come a time when two vans pulled up yes. in the back? Yes, sir. Late at night? Yes. Tell us about that. Approximately 4 o'clock, um, the garage door of the TCF center opened. Uh, the counting room in the TCF center is in the basement. So when the garage door opened, a van pulled up, um, one on day shift, one on night shift. They were supposed to be for food because they were short on food for the workers. That's what they said over the microphone. That's what Daniel Baxter said. Um, they ha he said they had food for one third of the workers. Um, and that they would provide food and, and it would be there shortly. Well, um, food never came out of these vans. Yes, what's your point of order, point Representative? Of order. We have these people coming in here testifying, making claims. They should be under, uh, they should, they should, we should have them under, what do you call it? Oh. Under oath. Representative, oh, we under don't do that. Here. Representative, oh, uh, we're not going to do that. Oath. You're out of I have order. An affidavit. You're out of order, Representative. We're not. We Mr. don't do Chairman, that here in Michigan. Chairman, We've never done that. I wrote an affidavit. Mr. Chairman, she has, a, she has an affidavit. Biden never has done. She has an affidavit under oath. Representative, please continue. And uh, if if we could have fewer uh, the back and forth, and maybe you can tell your story. Um, no, I'm talking with Mr. Giuliani. I just. We really want to get through this, and uh, this is sort of a format that is a little unusual to our committee. Um, so if it's possible to tell a little more of your story, and, and I understand you're trying to speed it up, but we want to make sure we get through everything today, Mr. Giuliani. And reach, and reach them for your affidavit. That's your affidavit. Sure. Under uh, so I have 19 things in my affidavit. Uh, I was at the TCF Center for 27 hours. I'm a mother. I have two children, and I have two degrees. I'm very, um, I, I would never, I don't know any woman in the world that would write a, an affidavit under oath just to write it. <laughs> you know, you can go to prison for this. So anyways, um, I want to make this very clear. Um, my... I was initially supposed to um, work at the uh, Detroit Department of Elections building. Um, that was an order by my manager, Nick Economogonis, um, part owner of Dominion. I have it all in emails. What was going, I was trained on the adjudication and tabulation process. So. In the email, it says you are to park in a parking lot and get shuttled over to this, um, they called it the, they referred to it as the Chicago warehouse. Um, I know for a fact there was illegal activity going on there. People have pictures of people carrying ballots out of that place. Um, there is pictures of vans full of ballots coming out of that place. Um, if it wasn't for my mother, I would have went there. My mom told me, no, 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 no way. You know, um, this sounds really, really weird. And I have two young children, as I stated, that I needed access to my vehicle in case something happened. Um, I ended up telling them that, and they said, okay, we'll put you at the TCF Center. Well, um, Samuel, there was five employees, three permanent employees of Dominion, two contract employees, me a contract employee, and there was a 90-year-old man. 
last name Smiley. I have his all of his paperwork. I have all their um, names, last names. Four employees that were um, scheduled to work in the city of Detroit um, that were not at the TCF Center were all at this Chicago warehouse, which was the election, the, the city depart election department building. Anyways, so I also witnessed um, um, there was a point in the night where um, Dan, or um, uh, I'm sorry, Samuel uh, and Nick said that there was a big data loss. Um, they started freaking out, stepped off the stage, got on their phones. Um, I asked them what was going on. They said it was taken care of. Nick sent Samuel over to this warehouse for about three hours. When he got back, I said, where were you? Where'd you go? Um, he said, I was at the warehouse. And I said, what were you doing there? And he's like, you know, nothing. They just needed my help. Well, um, I said, where is this warehouse? And he said, because I, I wasn't putting two and two together yet that I, you know, was initially supposed to work there because I'd never even looked up the address. And um, he, what I believe is it wasn't a data loss. It was actually when they found out Trump was ahead 100,000 100, votes and they sent Nick over there to assist with these um, ballots that came in on in these um, vans full of ballots that people can attest to that they witnessed being carried out of these vans at the TCF Center. I didn't see any ballots being carried out of vans. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to lie. I didn't see anything being carried out of them, but I know people who have. In the, did see this um, occurring. But um, I also witnessed the adjudication process. Um, numerous adjudicators were machines where um, all the ballots were being judged by um, two Democrats. I heard them talking. They, one woman said to another woman, are you a Republican or are you a Democrat? She said, I'm a Democrat. And she said, well, so am I. Let's sit together. Sat together all night judging ballots. You know, I mean, it, it, thousands of ballots got judged all night by the, 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 the reason the rules there is so, you know, um, it, it can be a fair process. It wasn't a fair process. It wasn't a fair process at all. And the tabulating problem with them um, running numerous ballots through these tabulators and just continuing to do it. I had a friend that I knew for over 20 years and he came up to me and said, he was working the night shift. He came up to me and said, Melissa, we did not get any training at all, none. He goes, I have no idea what I'm doing. He was with three other people. I said, um, I just told my manager that. I said, I could tell you guys don't know what you're doing. And he said, uh, nope, we were trained on the adjudication process, not the tabulation process. And I said, so you don't know what you're doing? And he said, nope. I said, great, that's just great. Because nobody was helping me. I was, you know, running around assisting these people all night long. And it, it was all day and all night. It was crazy. And they were running these ballots through without discarding them countless times, countless times. There were so many ballots <laughs> ran through these tabulators numerous times. I mean, without any oversight <laughs> at all. I mean, there's so much, this, this election, I will say, it, they took, these Democrats took every avenue possible to commit fraud in this election. And what I saw on the third and fourth was over 20 counts of fraud being done, taking place in front of my face. And this isn't counting you know, the ballots that are found in rivers, the ballots found under rocks, the ballots, uh, you know, that, that, that okay, ended up. First of all, a, a, representative, please. Let, uh, let me tell you representative, why you rep it. do you have a point of order? I love how you can What's just your say point whatever of order? you want to say. <laughs> do you have a point of order, representative? She's just.
Cynthia wants to defend the fraud. This is funny. All right. Uh, Ma'am, please continue. Yeah. So, um, and, and also, by the way, I mean, can you maybe speak to your experience? I know uh, we've heard stories of ballots being thrown in rivers, but, but I, I want to make sure we're speaking to your experience because we have limited time and Absolutely. we got to get our questions in okay, and the other well, witnesses. So is there, is there more uh, to your experience? And then, well, okay. I called the FBI yeah, okay. on the 8th, November 8th. I talked to two separate women, um, over 40 minutes. The first one gave her all my information. Um, the phone mysteriously cut out and, uh, she never called me back. I was waiting for her to call me back. She never called me back. Um, I had to call them back and, um, they never called me back. Never got a call back. Still haven't got a call back. And I had somebody else working on it that has a neighbor that's, um, an old FBI agent and still haven't heard back from that. Can I ask you just one last question? Sure. sure. So how many ballots would you estimate in front of you that you observed were counted multiple times in the machine? Can you put a number to it, an estimated number? At least, at least 30,000. At least 30,000. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, and I guess I'll ask a question. Um, I, I just want to understand. So, so what is um what is your role with dominion can you clarify that okay um Thank you. You're, you're welcome um my role with dominion was to assist with it for the election so are you uh, you're some kind of contract employee i was a, a contract employee yes okay of what uh organization i'm sorry I, I Who did, so were you you were like a contract employee of dominion or was there some so I have my contractor. so I have my resume everywhere, yeah. you know, and um, because I was laid off from Ford, mm -hmm. so they just found my resume and called me and said, "Do you want to do? Do you want to work the election, the third and the fourth? I see. But you're employed directly by Dominion. Uh, did Dominion pay me? No. Uh, PDS Staffing paid me. Okay. Because they they can they called me. But I was working for Dominion, yes. Okay. Something and very, very suspicious, too, must I add, that we were not allowed to wear name tags at all. We were not allowed to talk about who we worked for. They were very secretive. They didn't want anybody knowing anything about them. And, um, and so I just want to make sure I understand you correctly. So you said um, you're, you're alleging that you heard or that you witnessed uh, ballots being put in the machine run through counted and then put through it again is that what you're Without alleging out discarding mm -hmm. that is what i am telling you to be a fact and did you and so and how many times did you witness this happening i witnessed it in a 27 hour period thousands and thousands of times yeah that's uh that's very interesting and um and i will note um you know, Dominion won't come before this committee. I've asked them, uh, and so far they've refused. And and I do want them to come before this committee because uh, we need answers from them about how their how their They're machines missing. work. Uh, so we're going to continue to try to get them here. Uh, but with that, I'll go to Representative Lefebvre. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I am not sure how I'm going to do this with one question, but I'm going to try my best anyway. So. With these tabulator machines, of which you estimate there are approximately 22 to 24, mm -hmm. you, I guess I'm not understanding. So you place batches of 50 on top of the machine. No. Okay. So um, we're going to look, I'm going to try to explain it to you as if it's a printer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, a printer when when the papers come out of the printer that's where in a tabu these tabulators that's where you would feed the 50 in okay now on top of the printer right so where the scanner would be right if it's like a four in one right so um that's where these ballots would come out after they had been tabulated okay 
So if one jammed, number 25 jammed, right? Then it would put up an error. Discard, rescan. Ballot number 25 has an issue. So they would then take all the ballots that had been tabulated from the top, right, that are now on the top, the 24 that are on the top, the ones that are on the bottom that haven't been tabulated yet, okay? And number 25, the problem ballot, they would put number 25 on top, they would discard the entire batch, and then they would rescan it. Instead of discarding it, they would rescan them, counting those 24 again, okay? Now, let's say it was out of 50, number 48 that jammed. That's 47 being counted again. I'm just using a, you know what I'm saying? So, does that clarify that? Okay. It does. And basically, you put batches of 50 in until you're done with that precinct, right? That's what they would do, yes. But a lot of these, so a lot of these workers would, the, the, they would get a batch of 50, and then they wouldn't get an, another batch for like 10 minutes. So then the ballot box was behind them, the steel ballot box. So they would have this batch of 50 in front of them for 10 minutes with no oversight. So they would run them through again with no oversight. They, they just had no idea what was going on. And if they did know what was going on, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, right? So I'm saying they have no idea what's going on. Who knows? They did. You know, I have no idea. That was I know helpful. what my friend said. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative C.A. Johnson. Mm. You're on our list. Did you have a, did you have a question? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, Representative Camilleri. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and thank you for your testimony. Um, going back to the ruling from Judge Kenny, Timothy Kenny, he writes that your description of the events at the TCF Center does not square with any other affida right. affidavits. Yeah. He says that there are, I, excuse me, I'm, please, I'm speaking. Please, thank uh, you. let's let the representative finish and then you can he, he writes that there are no other reports of lost data or tabulating machines that jammed repeatedly every hour during the count. He also writes that neither Republican nor Democratic challengers nor city officials substantiate your version of these events. The allegations simply are not credible, is what Judge Kenny writes. So my question for you is, uh, you know, you're making claims here today that there's systematic fraud in, in what's going on in our elections. Are the courts also tied up in that fraud? Let me tell you what I did by accident, okay? I gave Channel 7 an interview that they tied in to that and made me the witness that's uncredible. Guess what? There's going to be a couple behind me that are going to say the same thing I just said. And the witness before you was also proven not credible as well by oh, the no, same judge. Oh, no, she wasn't because she, was. she wasn't even there. Representative the Camilleri, let's let her finish, please. Talked. The very Cam first time. Uh, so I just want to understand. Um, you know, I don't know what exactly all the things that are being talked about there are, but but can you tell us uh, what you said today is is the truth? Is that correct? Sir, I wrote a written affidavit. Yes, it is a hundred percent true. Okay, and and did did other people observe this? Absolutely. You'll be you'll, and behind me. You're going to hear a couple. Okay. And, uh, and, we'll, we'll hear and from them, let me hopefully. just state this. Mm -hmm. I was an IT worker on the stage. These, I was working with Dominion. I had not, not, no, poll workers were not allowed on the stage. The data loss, nobody would have heard about that besides me, Samuel, and Nick. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just like nobody knows that Samuel went to the where Chicago warehouse besides me because I worked for Dominion they didn't they're not gonna hear that part it, that you know what I mean the poll workers are not going to know that Samuel they're not even gonna know who he is you know they're not gonna know that he went to the warehouse so uh, can you I think to what camp representative Camilleri is asking is um, 
perhaps. Why, why is it that more people, and I know we have a couple here today, uh, but why is it that we're not having more people come forward? I mean, it seems like if there I'll was all this why. widespread fraud that, you know, we'd have dozens and dozens of people. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. My life has been destroyed. My life has been completely destroyed because of this. I've lost family. I've lost friends. I've been threatened. I've been, th my kids have been threatened. My, I've, I've had to move. I've had to change my phone number. I've had to get rid of social media. I've there. The, you, nobody wants to come forward. They're getting threatened. They're, they're people. Their lives are getting ruined. I can't even get an actual job anymore. I can't <laughs> because Democrats like to ruin your lives. That's why. All right. All right. Let's. Uh... Just like they do to Trump. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, uh, Representative Steve Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So obviously these allegations are very troubling. This is my my question here. If these ballots were run through multiple times, as you've alleged, and you said possibly up to thirty thousand times, definitely thousands of times mm -hmm. being counted. When we examine the poll book and see who voted, and we count those numbers. Yes. Would they then not line up with the total number of votes coming out of Detroit? Just later, later. Uh, the the poll book the poll book is completely off, completely off. Off that by thirty thousand. I'd say that poll book is off by over a hundred thousand. That how, poll book. Why don't you look at the registered voters on there? How many registered voters are on there? Did you do you even know the answer to that? No, I guess it's, I'm trying to get to the bottom zero. of this here. Zero, zero. There's zero. So, my question then is, if the guess how many? Wait, what about what about how what what about about the turnout rate? A hundred and twenty percent. Let's uh, let's let Representative Johnson ask his plastic question. So, <laughs> so the poll book number. Okay, there, there's two things that could happen here. Either the poll book number, if, if ballots were called multiple multiple times, there, there's two options. Option number one is that the poll book numbers are not going to match. The, they don't. The actual. Not by thousands and thousands of votes. That's not what we see right now. You that, take a look again. One. Take a look again. Option number two is that they essentially were, were filling in names of people who didn't vote. That, Dead that, people, too? So is that, Let's I guess, let is that Representative your Johnson ask his question, and then when I he's done. I thought that was his answer. Okay. Well, I guess uh, that, that's what, my, my question here is why we're not seeing the poll book off by 30,000 votes. That, that's not the what case. What did you guys do? Take it and uh, do something crazy to it? I'm just saying the numbers are not off by 30,000 votes. So I know what I saw. That they're filling in? I know what I saw. And I signed something saying that if I'm wrong, I can go to prison. Okay. Did you? Okay. We're, we're, I think, I'm just trying I to ask you a let legitimate me, uh, question here. Yeah. Let's let Representative Johnson ask his question and then don't interrupt him. And then, okay. and then, if you want to respond to it, that's fine. And, uh, did you have more representative? Yeah, I guess I just want to keep following back up with the poll book. So, are we saying that the poll book is either wildly off, or that they are that they are off. filling in names? It's wildly off. Off and dead people voted, and uh, illegals voted. Okay. So that's my uh, answer. I think we're going to move on. Yeah. Uh, representative Legrand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, ma'am, can I ask you a simple question? Sure. When did you convey your this your the narrative? When did you when did you communicate the to substantially the narrative that you've given us today? At what uh, do you recall the date that you gave that to the uh, Trump legal team to Mr. Giuliani and uh, the woman sitting next to him? Uh, to Mr. Giuliani to the, to the to team. Them, uh, uh, I'm working with um, a different attorney. They, 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 well, they're here with you now, and they heard your and they heard your story. And it's not the first time they heard it. When is the when did you tell them? I have when did you give them essentially the narrative? To Mr. Giuliani. You, pardon. I, I'm not. Don't be. I'm not asking you to, to finesse here. I'm asking you when did you tell them the narrative that when you're did telling I us now? I write my first affidavit, November eighth. Thank you. That's a good, great place to start. Thanks. Right. All right. But does that answer your question? Because I think it, it was It was sent if to Lauren McGloggan. If the, if the and I, don't know I think we're good here. Got uh, it. We'll move on. So thank you, Representative sure. Legrand. Just clarify for the record. I, I met her for the first time today. Mm -hmm. 
and talked to her for the first time yesterday. Mm -hmm. But if you're, saying the if you're saying the affidavit is essentially consistent with her testimony today and that was submitted on November 8th, that's great. That's what I wanted to know. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, his statement was, I think, I think his statement was, if the affidavit matches the testimony today, you're good. Uh, Is that what you said? Of course it matches it. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, I think we'll move on uh, to our next person, if that's all right. Um, thank you for your testimony today.